<laughs> Tom Hanks or Tom Arnold? Oh, Tom Arnold, yeah. It's not Tom Uncle Hanks. Furries! Uncle Furries! <laughs> and it is about to get good, because as I mentioned uh. before the break, we're going to the Super Nintendo, which is where Beam Software really hit its stride. Oh my god, it's right in my face! Oh! Ah! My face! Super International Cricket. Yep, the NES game was such a success, they brought it to the Super Nintendo. In fact, becoming, I think, the only Australian developer ever officially licensed for the Super Nintendo, or the NES for that matter. Oh, look at this. Digitized portraits. Oh man, that does look nice. That looks really nice! <laughs> Look at this. What are we doing? Huh? Oh, no. Get it! Get it! There. Uh, fair ball. <laughs> no one's out for a duck. I don't I know what's I was gonna say, happening. no one's a duck yet. <laughs> Clearly I'm doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. Alright, so it's got two different views. It zooms out to a larger view, a la baseball games. Which I guess is the right way to do it. And you have to throw at these posts, which isn't really as easy as you'd think. I think the NES one simplified it quite a bit. Meanwhile, this, you gotta go run out in the field, and a guy hits you with a freaking club. <laughs> there, this way. Oh yeah, uh, Strong Sad, I'm pretty sure we played Rise of the Dragon before, haven't we? On Sega CD? Yeah, we yeah. have. Boo. Oh my god, we forgot how to play cricket. Everyone's booing us. Everyone's looking at this field of humans and they're like, Where are the ducks? Sorry, <laughs> I, I shouldn't try an Australian accent. That's not... that's... that's... <laughs> no one's out for a duck! People are just falling over themselves on the field. <laughs> you hear a chant from the stands. Ducks! 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 Tiki, Tiki, how many ducks do you do you typically see in a cricket game? Yeah, just out of curiosity. What's the average? <laughs> I like the guy without a shirt! Yeah, God, that's very accurate. God bless them! Sorry. God bless them for putting that in. Unfortunately, they didn't make me the batter this time, so... No one's out for a duck. Over. Oh, uh, over? Okay. Now I'm the batter. Okay, go out for a duck. I'm still the other team. <laughs> they said it was over, but it's never over. Not out. Not out. They kept the how's at. Mm -hmm. I guess that's when the audience is being all like, come on, referee. I'm learning things. Alright, Tiki says they usually get uh, maybe one or two ducks, so... Mmm, I see. Depends on the team. In the S game, I was like duck after duck after duck. All you could hear from the field was just like a slew of quacks. <laughs> just deafening quacks echoing throughout the... There, <laughs> I knocked, on a, field I knocked over all the pins. I think I got a strike. <laughs> oh boy, this one really demands that you know how to play cricket. And that's unfortunate, because I don't. Yeah. <laughs> the NES one, I could at least pretend. Uh, Tiki lets us know that the duck thing is when you're a really bad batter, so... Oh, okay. So you have to play, like, absolute horseshit here. Yeah, unfortunately I'm not the batter here, I'm just a shitty fielder. So what's that, like a, a wallaby or something? Wombat. A wombat. Oh, I'm out for a platypus, that's what they call it. I Everyone's feel... insulted. They've all left now. Yeah, I don't we're, blame we're... You. we're I down to one follower. I completely missed the batter there. The uh... batter's just hanging his head in shame. Like, <laughs> oh, did anyone teach these guys how to play? This sucks. Well, if you want a more realistic, better-looking cricket game, I recommend oh, this what? one. But if you want constant ducks, I recommend International Cricket for the NES. Really, either game, it's got something for everyone. Ducks. Mostly throwing ducks. balls. Running out in the field, acting like you're not you don't know what you're doing. That's the cricket experience. <laughs> Meanwhile, in terms of games that were actually re released here in the States, segueing away from that. How about Super Smash T V? <laughs> I'm sorry, I was typing and then in the middle of my typing, the uh, chair just started to tilt away from the keyboard, so 
I don't know if you saw that, Danny. Alex is drifting across the room as he types. So this game is That's amazing. Nice and loud. There we go. Now, Beam Software also made Smash TV for the NES and the Genesis, and I think also the Game Gear. Those were all bad. They also made Super Smash TV for the Super Nintendo, and that is very, very good. It might be the best port of the game. I'm gonna play a little bit of it. Cool, I like Smash TV. So this was a pretty popular Midway game at the time, based off the Arnold Schwarzenegger movie The Running Man, where you're competing in a killer game show for cash and prizes. You know, there were a lot of things that have been released over the year about over the years about like, hey, what if there was a game show but it was like hyper violent? I know mm -hmm. there was like there was one there's been actually even a few movies where it's like, ah, oh, what if reality TV but hyper violent and things like that. And you yeah. know it's it's wild that that never actually happened, except maybe in... I get the feeling that it's going to happen someday. It feels like it's happened in maybe the YouTube world or something. Like, maybe. that's where the hyper... Like, it's like... Because that's kind of a place where it's just like, debase yourself for money! Is there going to be like, a YouTuber deathmatch in the future? I... Oh, here we go. Let's let, the, let's let the host have his say. Oh, uh, yeah. And yeah, this is a Eugene Jarvis joint K-Prize. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, from the designer of Robotron 2084, this is his next big twin-stick shooter, and, and it they, was huge. And they, they did a lot of things, didn't they? Oh yeah, uh, most recently, Eugene okay. Jarvis co-designed a game called Next Machina for the PS4. Oh really? Which was one of my favorite games last year, it's oh, super cool. good. And it's much in this vein, it's a twin-stick shooter that's really fast-paced. Good stuff. Now the thing about this, Smash TV was really popular, but none of the systems out at the time were really capable of handling it. If you look at the NES one, it's really obvious. They couldn't do it on that system. Oh! But, it, but in 1991, which is <laughs> super, super early for the Super Nintendo, Beam Software managed to make a nearly arcade-perfect version of this game when nobody else could. And the fact that it came out so, so early in the Super Nintendo's lifespan, that made it have a huge impact, because... It was competing with maybe a dozen games at that point. They were out early, and they had something really good, and they finally were able to capitalize on their abilities. Man, good for them. Yeah. Also, uh, there is a YouTuber boxing tournament, so... Uh, oh, good. That the, We may see our YouTube Smash TV dream soon enough. It's not my dream. <laughs> I just want to say, don't do that. Don't, don't... Can <laughs> Mike Tyson kill me in one punch? Yes. Find out live. Find out on YouTube Live. <laughs> Find out on YouTube Red. Now, I, the other great thing is that the twin stick setup maps perfectly to the Super Nintendo's controller. So, whereas other systems you had to deal with these compromised control schemes, on the Super Nintendo you could just shoot where you want, which was amazing. <laughs> it was kind of the whole point of the original arcade game, and really the only system capable of doing that. Now the NES one, they actually let you use two D-pads, which might have worked a little better, but considering how that game looked, you didn't really want to play it. Sorry, chat's, chat's really going in. Uh, <laughs> Good. Uh, like, comment, and subscribe to vote for my method of execution, says so actual geek deep. Ooh, that's a, that's a good incentive. Actually, that is an excellent Patreon incentive. Oh my god. <laughs> Danny, I have a great idea for when we revamp our Patreon. <laughs> Donate five bucks a month to kill my ass. <laughs> also want to note, I didn't have many Super Nintendo games back when it first came out. They were expensive. Nobody yeah. can afford all that shit. This was one of the few that I actually bought, because I knew it was just so good after renting it. I was like, okay, confirmed. I need this game. And for a while, this was one of the few Super Nintendo games that I owned and played on the regular. And it's just that darn good. And in fact, they added extra stuff to this, which we'll see in just a second here. If I can survive this. I guess I haven't talked much about Smash TV itself, but it really speaks for itself. It's, it's a classic. If you want to play the original, it's available on Xbox Live Arcade for Xbox 360. Uh, most of the other ports aren't worth it. Honestly, this version, you could do way worse than this. This is probably still good to play nowadays. So, uh, I found out something interesting from Codeman38. Thank you for mentioning this. Uh, -huh. uh, there was a game, there was a cricket game released so buggy it was pulled from sale. Wow. 
Ashes Cricket 2013. It was pulled just days after its release. Oh, it was it was recent. Okay, no, I, I've heard of that. Yeah, they they straight mm-hmm. up canceled it and they unreleased it. They unreleased <laughs> it. Yeah. There's two games that I can think of that. Uh, the other game that was released and then unreleased was a game called Afro Samurai 2. Uh, apparently, that was so bad it was pulled off of Steam within a few days. A lot of people did buy that game for a dollar, and they were disappointed. <laughs> Just straight up taking the line from, uh... <laughs> yeah, this game is very Robocop-inspired, mm-hmm. and, uh, pretty obviously so. And this, this room, and that collectible there is actually unique to the Super Nintendo version of this game. Uh, if you collect them all, you end up unlocking a turbo mode for the game, which is also exclusive to this version. I know a lot about Super Smash TV, I played it a lot. <laughs> it's like this in the Three Stooges. <laughs> So I guess you're a real Beam Software, uh... I was, unintentionally. It's not like mm-hmm. I was a super fan, it's just, you know, they develop so much stuff, you're bound to have played a couple of their games. And I'll go to bat for Three Stooges. It's pretty bad, but it's not as bad as the other games we played tonight. <laughs> oh good, that, that terrible cricket game has been preserved, so... Oh good. Yeah. Uh, you know offhand if Afro Samurai 2 was? Because that was on the market yeah. for a very short time. I don't know if anyone caught that. It was maybe like a dozen people who demanded their money back. <laughs> uh, will we be playing Blades of Vengeance tonight? Oh, unfortunately no. I didn't have any Genesis games planned. But yeah, they did do Blades of Vengeance for the Genesis, which was a pretty interesting game. It was kind of like Taito's Kadash, I think? It was like a two-player hack-and-slash. But yeah, even on Genesis they were putting out good stuff at this time. This is now a Super Smash TV stream. I was gonna say, this is now a... We are a pro-beam software. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry, I'm having fun now, so I'm not gonna stop playing. <laughs> and anyway, here's the big showpiece of the game. I'd buy that for a dollar. Mm-hmm. As far as post-apocalyptic catchphrases go, that's pretty good. <laughs> it, it really is. I can definitely... It captures the nature of consumerism. Yeah, I can see people saying that in, the, in, saying that in a few years, you know. Except instead of a dollar, it's like, I don't know, some kind of... I'd buy that currency. for 50 bitcoins. You think bitcoins will be, like, worth any... Like, because, like... They'll be worth as them. much as non-sports trading cards. Oh, nice! That means I can stock up. <laughs> He's got like a thousand bitcoins just hanging out in my closet, you know, no biggie. Also, they're physical things now. (laughs) (laughs) I've mined for real bitcoins. The rich bitcoin reserves of the Utah mountains. (laughs) You mined all of the Utah mountains for bitcoins. (laughs) Just you wait. It's a crazy future we're living in. We We basically are in Smash TV just without the VCRs. I could use a nice VCR, though. Yeah. That's one of the great things about this game. When you pick up the presents, it shows you what you want, and it's always something, like, super trivial, like a VCR or a toaster or something. Just putting that in perspective while you're killing thousands of people. And, okay, not to get too far off topic, but Mm -hmm. Eugene Jarvis's games kind of have that as a central theme throughout. Kind of like this edgy look at our future and also our present. Mm -hmm. Because there's not just this, there's target terror. (laughs) I was thinking about target terror. I was was gonna mention that he he did target Which at the same time is an indictment of violence uh, that America perpetrates and also like a celebration of it. It like, it rides that fine line, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't know how he does it. It's like, wow, America sure is terrible. Wow, this game sure is great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like, I think, although, the, that one, the finale of Target Terror, the damn it. Oh yeah, there's no excusing that. That's, that's just, that's just ludicrous. <laughs> yeah, opponent, I'm waiting for Target Terror 2 as well. Although, I don't know what they're gonna, what they're gonna go with after the finale. Hey, there was a new cruisin'. That That's came out. true! We actually saw that at the arcade the I other day. I played it. It oh. was uh, really basic and pretty mm-hmm. much what you'd expect from Raw Thrills. That's all I'll say about that. 
It was pretty fun, though. And if you want more of this, there's also a sequel called Total Carnage, which is a super in-depth, super hyped-up version of yeah, this game. Yeah, yeah, actually, uh, Strong Sad mentioned that in chat. Uh, also, it's called Strong Sad, my favorite home character. <laughs> yeah, it's no, good. Seriously. Now they mentioned that, uh, yeah, there is a pseudo-sequel to this, uh, Total Carnage, but it wasn't developed by Beamsoft. Mm-hmm. That one did get a Super Nintendo port by THQ, so it really sucks. Uh, play the original arcade version. Agreed. If, and if you're looking for a one credit clear of that game, uh, look for a friend of the show, Lord BBH, who's, oh, one, of yeah, the, who's yeah. one of the maybe three people in the world who can beat that game on one credit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, BBH is in chat. So they're, uh, they were talking about... Also, yeah, BBH and the opponent are talking about the best thing about target terror. And yes, it's shooting it's shooting the enemies, the terrorists, in the dick. Yep. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with target terror, all the enemies are FMV. And thus, they all have clips of when you shoot them in the dick. So everyone has a unique clip of clutching their crotch. It's like, ah, it's, it's great. It's like, yeah, it's, it's like it's, Virtual Cop with constant crotch shots. It's like a post-9-11 lethal enforcers. Wow, that's a phrase. But it's true, though. It is true. Prove me wrong. <laughs> Post 9-11 Lethal Enforcers. I, I'm pretty I, sure that's Lethal Enforcers 3, but that's <laughs> another story. Oh, look at all those toasters I won. And I got all those 1999 Roadsters. Wow, that's a lot of cars. You can make a lot of money with look that. Look at all these VCRs. Oh, but you're going to have to pay a lot in taxes. Oh, true. Can I pay the IRS in VCRs? I think you can just pay them in straight-up cash, actually. Okay, that'll work. But yeah, if you compare what you've seen here with the original arcade Smash TV, it's really close. Especially in terms of gameplay. They, they just nailed it. Highly recommend this game. But what else did they do for Super Nintendo? So this game... This, I think, is my favorite Beam Software game, and one of my favorite Super Nintendo games. Definitely top five. Shadowrun is just fucking amazing. <laughs> I don't even know what to say about it. Well, as we mentioned in the last segment, uh, apparently they were developing Nightshade Part 2, but they scrapped what they had and started making a game based on the FASA tabletop game Shadowrun, which is pretty much Dungeons & Dragons meets Neuromancer. Yeah, people really like Shadowrun, so... I assume it's good, but mm -hmm. I haven't, actually. I'll tell you what I did with this game. I never owned it, but I rented it at least eight or nine times. Like, I would go back to the video store, and if they didn't have a good new Super Nintendo game, I'd just be like, okay, time to play through Shadowrun again. <laughs> In retrospect, I probably should have just bought it, but whatever. But this is a point-and-click adventure game in an isometric viewpoint. You start off on a slab in the morgue, <laughs> That so, owns. yeah, that's a that's a link to Nightshade right there. You're about to be killed in Nightshade, and here you're already dead. Morticians freak out when they see you. That's okay. We'll, we'll revisit them. A uh, quick question from Devil Ray: Who developed the Genesis version? Uh, Genesis version was Sega Internal. That was Sega of America. Yeah, Genesis version of Shadowrun, completely different game. Also, really good. I didn't really like it much back in the day, but playing it recently, it's it's super good. Alright, here you meet a guy who says that hitmen are after you, so you, you go follow him. Hey, friend. Hey, talk to me! Come Quit on, running talk away. to me! Come on, bro, help me out here. Oh, that doesn't sound good. Well, our friend is dead, but he dropped a gun. Useful. And we need guns more than friends. Yeah. And yep, that's an orc. <laughs> it's pretty much Neuromancer with orcs and elves, which really pissed off the author of that book. He doesn't think very highly of Shadowrun. <laughs> What's his name? Uh, uh, is that Gibson, or is it someone else? Man, I, I wish... You know, I should be more into cyberpunk, but it just seemed kind of hard to get into, and... This was my only exposure to it ever through uh, Shadowrun, and I loved it. I'm not, like, anti-cyberpunk, I just... Because Cyberpunk... William Gibson, okay. Especially back then, mm -hmm. it wasn't really explored at all on the Super Nintendo. Mm -hmm. A lot of games have uh, Japanese or European influence, but not necessarily Cyberpunk. 
Grr. So we meet a ghost dog, and he's our totem, <laughs> because the game incorporates elements of Native American mythology for some reason. It pulls from a lot of things. Yeah! And let me tell you, as, as a kid back then, I was just blown away. Like, wow, this game is everything. It's a point and click, it's a shooter, it's a... It's a computer hacking sim later on. Uh, I got a very important question from Video Game King. Uh -huh. uh, I was asked, what is my stance on cyber hunks? And my stance is... They're extremely good. <laughs> there you have it. Mm -hmm. Straight from a mouth. So the game's a mixture of picking up, using items, finding things, basically doing a lot of detective work. By the way, you have amnesia. So you have to piece together this, this story that's already running in the background. And as it turns out, you have a bomb implanted in your head, so you only have a few hours to piece things together and get that shit sorted. And you also have to find God, okay. aka, AKA Dog. Mm -hmm. Dog is your God. Okay. So we're helping out this dog here. I even okay, like the, I like the woofs. Yeah, was, yeah I, I even good. like the way the game does text boxes. It's mm -hmm. so charismatic, so different. Uh, I forget what you do next. Anyone remember how you get the key to your apartment? There's just like random schmoes you can talk to and they'll try and brush you off. Uh, let's see, I was asked my opinion And also, on... oh, yeah. you can just straight up kill them. Oh, Danny! You can kill random innocent people in no, this game. No, Danny, no! But it affects your karma. A uh, dog doesn't like that. Dog's gonna rip your face off, and I don't blame dog. <laughs> uh, I do like cyber fights, yes. Oh yeah, this guy. See, you find an uncan unconscious man, but he can't talk to you. All you know is that he seems familiar. And he has your door key in his pocket. And also a memo and some money, which we're just gonna take. See ya. So yeah, while these themes and other elements may seem like familiar or even hackneyed nowadays, back in the Super Nintendo era, and when you pitch it to a teenager at the time, it is completely new, completely awesome, and just the greatest thing in the world. I love this game. I was asked if I like Cyberball. Yes, I do. Uh... Oh, I'm waiting for the XFL Cyberball. <laughs> oh, God, we have to wait till 2020 for that. That mm -hmm. sucks. I have to wait till 2020 to see a league fail. I want it now. All right, and we made it back home somehow. And once again here, you don't keep very good notes for yourself, so you just have to... Oh, nice money. You gotta Man, figure things money. out on your own. Oh, there's also uh, video phones. Cancel your run, Jake. That doesn't sound good. Drake. Uh, Frat Bay Fiasco, my opinion on Cybermorph is that it's kind of boring to play. Kind of interesting, though, at least from a design standpoint, they were trying to do something kind of different. But what I mostly remember about Cybermorph is that review of <laughs> of uh, Cybermorph from... In, in Game uh, Fan Magazine. Yes, yeah. where they were all high on LSD. Mm -hmm. Someone spiked their coffee pot, and they wrote a review of Cybermorph, and it that was is a six the page review. I've ever read. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so this is a really long and involved game. I recommend you play it. Even today, this is still really good and unlike anything else in the Super Nintendo. But we're going to end with the most important thing. There. Now we have sunglasses. Nice! Oh, you're so cool. Oh, <laughs> look at you. the coolest dude. Oh, I could, I could play this game for hours, but I really have to limit myself here. Play mm -hmm. freaking Shadowrun. It's got dialogue trees. It's got... All these different weapon systems, it's different people dogs. you can hire. It's got ghost dogs. <laughs> it's got cybernetic enhancements. It's got matrix hacking. You can hack into the matrix. This game don't even have Keanu Reeves in it. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but to wrap things up here, let's go with the last major game Beam Software made. Uh, there was a decline later on. They eventually got sold off, split up. But their last major console release, as far as I know, was True Lies. 
And it's an LJN game, so, you know, the odds are against it right away. Oh, Dominic White says that the character from Shadowrun and Super Nintendo makes an appearance in Shadowrun Returns. Oh, nice! Yeah, they did resurrect the series uh, for PCs. Different developer, different publisher, but still, more Shadowrun. Can't be a bad thing. Alex, you want to play this one? You know, I haven't, I haven't let you played play a single anything. game, yeah. So you put me in front of True Lies. I don't know if I should thank you or... <laughs> Anyways, let me just... Well, if you're unfamiliar with the movie, it's a Arnold Schwarzenegger slash Tom Hanks vehicle. <laughs> Tom Hanks or Tom Arnold? Oh, Tom Arnold, yeah. It's not Tom... Uncle H Furries! <laughs> Uncle Furries! <laughs> oh my god! Okay, I'm pressing the start button! Alex has never pressed the start button faster than that. Oh my god! I... Um, I'm I gonna check my options real quick. I didn't know that was there. I didn't know there was an Uncle Furry store. <laughs> In true lies. No, make it easy. No, normal or hard. Make it easy for me. Okay, okay, okay. I'll exit. Okay, let's, let's, let's go. Let's go find this Uncle Furry. Yes, I'm, yes. I'm, I'm gonna start. To, okay, we're gonna time start to Uncle Furries. And oh yeah, Strong said there was a Shadow Run for Xbox 360 and PC. Uh, they changed it into a competitive first-person shooter. What the? F Why? <laughs> All right, Harry, he's getting out of the icy waters because he, he needs to go to Uncle Furry's. Yeah, he's taking a cold shower after going to Uncle <laughs> Furry's. Can we please rename Fur Affinity to Uncle Furry's? It and would be much is. better. And... That's, that's Super Nintendo Tom Arnold right oh, there. That is him! Talking to Super Nintendo Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's a parade of the stars here. Okay, I gotta get out of here. I've never actually beaten this part, so what do I need to do? Just kill the bad guys and... Um, actually... Oh, too late. You can play this as a stealth segment. At least until you start shooting people. Hey, stop. Stop I shooting think... me! I'm shooting you like a thousand times! How are you not dead? <laughs> I think you're looking for a computer on the second floor. Now note there's a lot of innocent bystanders here that you can't shoot. Good, uh, I don't Tom want Arnold to get mad at you. Cool, no one, no one cares. He'll tell Roseanne on you. <laughs> Roseanne! This guy killed a bunch of people. I, I I like all the different character sprites. There's a bunch of different pedestrians and waiters and stuff. Hey, I'm stealth, baby! No one can see me in my giant gun. Yep. Alright, I want to get that help. Move. Move, I need to go to Uncle Furry's. Move! I kind of like that you can play the game peacefully, and in fact it encourages you t to do that. <sighs> I think if you kill three uh, innocent people, the stage is the stage is over. Good. I negotiate with terrorists. Thanks for the sub. Okay, Appreciate thank it. you. Tom Arnold is a conehead. Was he in Coneheads? Yes, he was. Oh my god. He's also in the Stupids. Don't forget. Yes, I, I'm aware of his breakout role in the Stupids. <laughs> Yeah, I found a security pass code. He does an excellent performance of the song, uh, I'm My Own Grandpa. That, that song movie. still runs through my head sometimes. It Me sucks. too. I'm cursed. <laughs> Shout out to everyone who got cursed by the film The Stupids. And every once in a while you're like, oh, I'm my own grandpa, and nobody knows what the hell you're doing mm -hmm. because nobody saw The Stupids but you. Okay, hey, second hey. floor is when people start shooting Okay, at you. I don't like that. I'm gonna hide over here. So you get to see how this game works as a shooter. And as it turns out, it's pretty good. Also pretty bloody. Hey, don't! And that's the weird thing about this. This came out on Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis, and by this point, after seeing games like Total Recall, you're aware that LJN plus Arnold Schwarzenegger e equals pain. It's not gonna be anything worth playing. And then freaking Beam Software comes out of nowhere and makes something that's actually fun. Because this game's good. I'm sure it's better at shooting, but... I think right. you can strafe somehow? I don't know. Probably. <sighs> Bullet winged me. I need a health kit. More health kits. Give health to Alex. Thank you. Okay, that's not gonna work. Boogaloo tells us he was uncredited in Coneheads. Oh my god. Talk about an insult. <laughs> not even good enough to be credited in Coneheads. <laughs> okay, there's no health here. I don't care. Um... <laughs> Oh, we're talking about people famous from where we from where you live. Yeah, Cleveland, it's all about Drew Carey. Hey, hey! hey. The 
current host of The Price is Right. Oh, crap. Watch it, Harry. You died out there. No shit. No shit. Yeah, no notice shit, if you hold down the fire button, you uh, strafe in one direction, it looks like. Oh, you do? Or maybe that's a different fire button? It's been a while since I've played this. Oh, yeah, you got your combat roll. Also, am I remembering wrong, or was True Lies actually a pretty good movie? I remember people really enjoying that movie back in the day, but I don't know whether it's good, it's bad. I liked it. Yeah, Burton, I do remember this movie being very silly, and maybe that's why I liked it. It didn't really take itself too seriously. It was just Arnold and... <laughs> Jamie Lee Curtis? And I Tom think? Arnold and Jamie Lee Curtis? Was yeah, Jamie that's Lee right. Jamie Lee Curtis? Yeah, Jamie Lee Curtis was his wife in this movie. You know what's funny? I've never seen this movie, but I can tell you who starred in it. That's the power of advertising, baby. <laughs> That's the power of love. That's what I'm going to go back to where I was. And the whole plot of this movie is that Jamie Lee Curtis doesn't know that he's a secret agent. When it's really obvious, because he's just going around shooting people. This game is a pretty accurate there version of that. Hey, 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 uh, don't kill me. I don't, yeah. I'm not getting to Uncle Furries. I'm so sorry. This is your last life, Harry. Okay. <laughs> Don't shoot taxpayers in an election year. It just makes good political sense. Oh, God, ain't that the truth? Okay. Okay, these guys are poison, and when you rub up against them, you lose a lot of life. Give me that controller. Okay, Danny's gonna get us to Uncle Furry's, okay? Thank you for your effort. Okay, I tried, I tried. Wow, look what you did, Alex. Look what you did. <laughs> That's you. You did that. Uh huh, uh huh. Who blew up the world? You blew up the world. Ah, someone had to. I'm just gonna watch the demo again, because I want to see Uncle Furries. We just want to see Uncle Furries! <laughs> the thing I least expected to see. Alright, we got Wig Out. We got Earl's House of Twine. And the famous Uncle, Uncle Furries. Furries. Beautiful. Oh. I like how the yuppies can't tell that you're shooting people, because they're too busy. Yeah, they're taking pictures. Some people... Lady shopping. So the fact that there's so many pedestrians really makes this more of a uh, thinking man shooter. I can't believe I said that. Pretend I said something more cool than that. <laughs> this is not a thinking man shooter, but it's different. They tried something a little bit different. You gotta think before you shoot. I like how that guy cowers underneath <laughs> his newspaper. That's that's actually really funny. <laughs> And I guess their artists learned a thing or two over the years, because the art in this game is way better than their NES stuff. What's that store over there? Ratzos? I think so. Ratatouille. Aerosol Cheese Emporium! Okay, alright, alright. This right. game's freaking great. <laughs> I, I, this, this stream has turned me around completely on beam software. Rat in a dish? Rat in a dish! Rat in a dish! Rat in a dish! You Rat can, in a dish. You can't argue with results, people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna see if I can beat the first level here. Okay, good luck. Uh, probably not. Probably not gonna do that, but we'll see. Oh, whoops. Off to a great start. You can't kill civilians! I know, I know. It's a, it's a freaking election year. You can't kill yuppies, I'm There's sorry. no way we're gonna get George W. back in office. <laughs> oh, they already saw me shooting people, now they're all after me. This sucks. That lady's acting all sassy, like she can't believe there's a gunfight at the party. Well, you know, I wouldn't. It does suck. <laughs> you didn't have to kill that guy, they, they weren't shooting at you. See, because you're in a different room. They, if they haven't seen you shoot, like, one person and they don't see other people shooting at you, they won't shoot at you. I but see. now they want to shoot at you. Well, I'm just gonna combat roll through everything. That seems to work. Out of the way, I got a modem to fix. Geek Squad, coming through. <laughs> Did you hear about Geek Squad? Warned? They're, ra they're, they're, they're snitches. They're, they, they got paid to be snitches by the government. <laughs> Well, Best Buy wasn't paying them. I was gonna say, it's like, I feel bad, but that's the only way to make any money if you're working in a big box store. Everyone's getting screwed, from Geek Squad to Beam Software. That's the one true constant. 
Oh, I like the uh, also, some more info on some more Beam games. Uh, Beam technically did Looney Tunes Space Race on PS2 and Dreamcast. Oh, nice. Fun. Yeah, they're, they existed for a good long time after their, uh, their big days in the NES and Super Nintendo eras. Oh, there was a few games I wanted to mention. I have a list of them. Let's see. Okay, before you mention that, I just want to go, That was a Caddyshack 3? <laughs> what the fuck? Okay, Other games continue. they did include Jim Lee's Wildcats for the Super Nintendo, which is a beat-em-up based on the comic book. Okay. Didn't see much of Wildcats, so pretty unique to have a game out there. Um, they also did The Dame Was Loaded, which is a film noir FMV game for DOS. Almost came out for CDI. That would have been the best CDI game. I have not played this, uh, but as I told Bobinator this afternoon, I'm super excited to know that a group of Australians made a film noir FMV game. For the CDI! For, almost for the CDI. As, uh, as it turns out, it was only released for DOS. Uh, they were planning other platforms, but I guess they uh, thought better of it. But man, I gotta play that. Ah, uh, Caddy Shack 3 is Who's Your Caddy? Yeah, I remember Who's Your Caddy. Mm. Okay, now I'm looking at the Wikipedia page for Who's okay. Your Caddy. I'm Other sorry. games? They did an itchy and scratchy mini golf game for Game Boy. I remember that! <laughs> and apparently it's not that bad. It's apparently pretty good. And finally, they did a card based puzzle game for the Super Nintendo called Super Solitaire which was released in Japan as Trump Island. Oh, that's... <laughs> really unfortunate name. Other fun facts. Um, Punisher, I think we brought that up. They did the NES game. That was one of the few crosshair shooters released for the NES. Uh, Cabal-style game. I think McCall played through it a while back, and his... Uh, According to him, it wasn't that good, apparently. But at least, at least it looked a little different. Any other notable Beam Software games I'm missing? I'm trying to cover most of them. Uh... Not that I can think of, but all I know about Beam is uh, what I've seen on the stream and... Uh, You're not too up on your Australian developers. No, I, I can't. I'm not. I can't blame you. It's pretty obscure stuff, even for uh, game industry things. It's a lot of discussion about Outcast and Chat. Okay, the, good. The musical group. That's actually good. I'm glad. That's fine. I'm okay with that. Yeah, I was gonna say. Actually, that's the kind of chat we like. We, we like all chat, obviously, aside from like jerks. So. Oh, I'm downloading. Ah, Test Drive Le Mans. Yeah, that's another uh, game. By good old Beam. Oh yeah, later on they eventually became Chrome Studios and they worked on Microsoft Game Room, which was a uh, short-lived arcade game service for Xbox 360. God, no one remembers Game Room. And they also made Blade Kitten, which is Strider for furries. That's really all it is. Stop killing civilians, Danny. Sorry, there's just so many of them. You just, you just killed two, just... You didn't have to kill that guy. That was... You wouldn't have your way to kill him. I'm being safe here, alright? Wait, they did tie the Tasman... Who, who did tie the Tasmanian Tiger? They did tie the Tasmanian Tiger? Boy, that would make sense if they did, huh? Yeah. Oh, they apparently worked on a Spyro game, too. Oh, no, I killed a third guy. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, man, T Tom Arnold getting a little bit too real here. However, this being a public situation, you've blown your cover. Now you'll have to restart the mission. Back to Uncle Furries with you. In fact, I'm just going to reset the game and leave it on Uncle Furries. So Beam Software, what did we learn here? Uh, we learned that a scrappy studio with a can-do attitude and some real programming chops can somehow survive being completely abandoned by their publisher and then just turn into a complete shit show of a developer in the NES era. Gotta say, the, the people who made The Hobbit, considering how complex that game is, they really didn't deserve what they got in the NES era. They got, the, they got a raw deal. Uh, from what we saw, they were bouncing around from publisher to publisher just doing these really, really cheap license jobs that probably made LJN millions and them a few thousand, probably enough to stay in business. 
But they did, and they managed to get to the Super Nintendo era, and they made Shadowrun, so all is forgiven. Seriously, Shadowrun is super, super good. It Cannot is. recommend it highly it enough. It looks good. I want to play that. And this game, uh, Uncle Furries. Uncle Furries and Rat in a Dish. Do I need to say more? I don't mm -hmm. think I do. But, yeah, if this looks like something that would be fun, it is fun. I recommend trying it out. It's got a lot of personality. It's it, They tried. Eventually they started trying. Eventually they had the time and the budget that allowed them to actually put effort into their games. And you know what? That's what you need. <laughs> Give people time. Give them the money they need to make good games. Because in the end, that's what we all want. We just want to make good games. We just want good games. And I want to play them. And I don't want to play freaking Back to the Future 2 and 3 ever again. Because, oh, oh, come on, though. It's good. Oh, it makes me so mad. I'd rather go to the Aerosol Cheese Emporium. Just, like, spray it all in your face? Yeah. That's <laughs> good. Can you get high off of huffing Aerosol Cheese? 